All right, so the other type of both weak acids and conjugate and weak bases come from conjugate pairs. <coughs> These, these set up uh, because of the equilibrium processes of weak acids and weak bases. All right, so hmm, what do we want to do? Acetic acid, <coughs> hydrofluoric, formic, let's do acetic acid, okay? Let's pretend we got some pickle juice. So we got acetic acid, this is water, and we'll have to do this so we'll have to get good at this, is drawing the reaction for what acids do and what bases do in solution. Okay, so acetic acid, well, do you think acetic acid is an acid or a base? Acid. It's an acid, nailed it, good job. Okay, yes, acetic acid. That's why that was funny. If you didn't catch that, that was a good joke. Um, uh, so acetic acid, so what do acids do? For Bronsted Lowry. Donate protons, so that's what we gotta do. You gotta give away one of those protons and you react it with water. Okay, so always react it with water and then just get rid of one of those protons. Once water gets that proton, what's it gonna produce? Hydronium, good, so H3O plus. And then after acetic acid over here, once this uh, molecule loses a proton or donates its proton, what's left? C2H3O2 minus. Yep, so after you lose that plus one charge, you're going to have a minus charge. Okay, and that will be aqueous as well. Okay, so for acid, you always get rid of one of those protons, and it's usually, not usually, but most of the time, it's that H plus out front. That's why we write out front to remind you of it's an acid. Okay. And then once you give that proton, the electrons stay. So you're going to be a negatively charged anion. And then water gets that proton, so it goes up to plus one. Okay. One way you can uh, double check to make sure your charges are right is that you can uh, balance equations based on the law of conservation of mass. That's why we keep the moles coefficients. But equations also have to be balanced with respect to charge. Okay? So over here, what's my charge? Well, everything's neutral, so my charge is zero. What about my product side? It has to be zero. Okay? So the charges have to be on both sides. It's the same on both sides. All right. All right, so acetic acid. Did we decide if that was an acid or a base? It's an acid, well acetic acid, it's still an acid. So that's a weak acid. All right, and it's weak acid because if you look at the forward reaction, the forward reaction, it's donating a proton to water, right? Now let's look at the reverse reaction. So acetic acid is now acetate right here, right? C2H3O2 minus. In the reverse reaction, what's happening? Well, hydronium is giving back acetate, it's proton, and it's becoming acetic acid. So what is acetate effectively doing? Oh, receiving. It's receiving that proton or accepting that proton. And what do we call things that accept protons? Bases. Bases, yeah. So acetate is a base, and it's and I'm still under equilibrium, so we know it's a weak base. So those are what known as, or what known, what is known as, conjugate acid-base pairs. So if you have a weak acid, after it donates that proton, whatever it becomes is a base, because it can accept that proton back to form the protonated acid again. Ever. There's actually another conjugate acid-base pair in this reaction. The hydronium and water. So water is, so uh, acetic acid is an acid donating. What's water doing? Accepting it. So what would we call that? A base. Yeah, so water is acting like a base right now. 
So, and it's setting up equilibrium, so it's acting like a weak base. And then on the reverse reaction, hydronium is doing what? Well, acetate's accepting it, so hydronium is do donating its uh, proton, so it's a weak acid. And it turns out the same thing is true for weak bases. All right, so let's think about another weak base. Let's think of methylamine, so CH3 and H2. Okay, so we got the nitrogen containing molecule in there. So for Bronsted Lowry, what's the base going to do? It's going to accept a proton. In aqueous solution, what's going to, where is it going to accept it from? It's H2O, yeah, it's going to react with water in aqueous solution. Okay. And so water is going to give it one of its protons. It's going to be attracted to that lone pair on that nitrogen. So after the base accepts that proton, it's got an extra hydrogen. And so we can usually write it with that hydrogen. So it would be NH3. Was NH2, now it's NH3. Just like ammonia was NH3, now then it was NH4. You could. Usually you'd write it with the nitrogen because that's what it's bonded to. I wouldn't be too picky about that though, unless I'm grumpy that day. It should be, well, first, what's, uh, so it will be, but first, uh, CH3NH2 just gained a proton, so it's going to be positively charged. It's going to be a plus, just gained that plus. And then, what's water going to become after it donates? Uh, hydroxide. hydroxide, good, yes. So we got hydroxide over here, OH minus. And again, our charge is balanced on both sides. So that's one way to double check. You got your charges, right? So that's what we should be able to do with bases. Throw a base in water. It's going to accept the proton off that water, making hydroxide. We know that's what bases do. They make hydroxide. So you always have hydroxide as a product for bases. And then whatever else except the proton, OK? And then on acid, you're always going to make hydronium. You're always going to be donating that proton to water. Now, we just learned that uh, nitrogen-containing uh, molecules like methylamine or ammonia are, hmm, let's go orange, feeling orangish. We know it's a weak base because it set up equilibrium, except for a proton. So now, it makes this CH3 NH3 plus ion, which I should know. Methyl ammonium, yeah, I think that would be its name. Methyl ammonium. Sure, you guys believe me. Okay. After we make this, pro uh, this, it's protonated. Okay. What would we call that? Because on the reverse reaction, that is donating a proton back to hydroxide, and so it would be a weak acid. Yep, so these are our conjugates. So our conjugate pairs are the methylamine or methyl ammonium. All right, what's the other uh, conjugate pair here? Water's donating a uh, proton to methylamine, so uh, what would we call it? An acid. And so, of course, after it donated, it became hydroxide. And on the reverse reaction, hydroxide is accepting a proton back, right? So what would we call it? Base. And of course, we know that a hydroxide is a base. I wouldn't worry about calling it anything there. Base, just call it a base. That's fine. When you look at it, water, it's going to be acid. Well, water is amphoteric. It can act like an acid sometimes. It can act like a base sometimes. In this case, it's actually like an acid. It's like, hey, I'm an acid. No, that's not how water acts. Yeah, it would be a weak acid here. 
You can call it a weak acid if you want. I just didn't want to call hydroxide a weak base. That's why I didn't do it. Full disclosure. I didn't want to call hydroxide a weak base. All right, so that are, those are conjugate base pairs. Right. <laughs> so uh, when we talked about, um, you know, what uh, weak bases are, nitrogen-containing molecules, that's a big class of them, but then the additional class are conjugate bases of weak acids. Mm -hmm. Conjugate. Uh, pairs of weak acids. <laughs>